What we have seen over the last four decades or so is that the very terms of the discourse about what constitutes food security has been, have been redefined. What we now find is that people are being convinced, governments are being convinced, that food security doesn't necessarily mean securing, ensuring supplies of food. The new assumption is that the markets will be able to provide the food uh, which is needed. Against this, farmers and, and their allies have organized what is called the food sovereignty movement. And this has been a very important counterweight. But this food sovereignty movement has a very limited impact because the number of people who are still involved in farming, especially production of food, has declined over time. And so they have very relatively little influence. In some societies, they have more influence than in other societies. But this has been extremely important because not all production, if, if people were to rely on markets alone for their, food, for their food supplies, they would have very much less food. Because, and so we find that a lot of people produce food. Very often women are involved in the production of food which, which they, they, which they uh, consume. And this has become part of what some people refer to as the care economy. And this is a very important development which people often underestimate, but is part of the reason why more people are not dying of starvation. If not, we would have many, many more people dying of starvation because the food is very, very mal distributed uh, throughout the world. Another very important consideration is the fact that inequality and poverty Inequality, although poverty numbers seem to have gone down, according to the World Bank, what we also find is that, that in fact, the very definition of poverty for the World Bank is a problematic definition. Because people have become, with market liberalization, people are much, much more reliant on markets to obtain their basic needs, especially uh, food. So the question of inequality, which has continued to increase in the last few decades continues to plague many people and especially people who are more and more vulnerable uh, are, are especially subjected to, to these forces. Uh, a third uh, issue of course which is increasingly recognized is the extreme weather events. Extreme weather events uh, are associated with climate change, with global warming and so on but this has especially affected the tropical zone where much of the world's population lives but it is precisely in the tropical zone where most developing countries are to be found. So you have relatively high populations dependent on relatively previously highly fertile land but that land is becoming less and less fertile precisely because you have monocultures which are absorbing the soil nutrients uh, to produce to produce whatever they are producing. And so th this is a, a, a very major problem. And with addition, with the extreme weather events, supplies of water are compromised, and so much of certain parts of the world are becoming more and more arid. At the same time, you have extreme weather events such as flooding, where many, very often, and, and the, the, the switch between droughts and floods is happening in, this, in precisely the same parts of the world in, 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 the, in the tropical zone. So this, is, this puts further stress on these societies. It's very, very challenging. 